Hey, 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 Denise here. Just uh, wanted to make sure before I get started that all the technology is working. There we go, good. Good, all right. As a reminder, always feel free to drop comments in the, you know, comments, questions, etc. down there, right? Today we are talking about the eight steps to creating habits that stick, and these work even in the holidays. So uh, as you're tuning in, if you could drop me a hi, where are you watching from? What's going on in your world? Are you working this week? Are you working today? Are you done working today? Hey there, what's going on? What are you up to? Yeah, nothing like a little collagen, right? Grow that hair out. Actually, I was just reading about uh, uh, hair and perimenopause and menopause, zinc and B12. I get those every day, so there's that. If you're catching the replay, I'd love for a hashtag replay. And um, what are you up to this week? Hey, Carrie, how are you doing? Happy Thanksgiving to you too. All right, uh, disclaimer. I'm a personal trainer and a hormone specialist, but I am not a doctor. Meh, that's that. For those of you that don't know me yet, my name is Denise. I've been a certified personal trainer for the last 18 years and a certified hormone specialist for the last six. I'm the creator of the Use Your Cycle Method, the founder of the Menopause Project, and host of Meno Minis, the podcast. So excited! Go check it out. Tell me what you think of that. Tell me what topics you want to hear on that too. Um, why did I become a hormone specialist? Because perimenopause stuck up on me. Because no one was talking about it. My mom didn't warn me. I don't have older sisters. I didn't have any girlfriends at the time that were older than me that could like give me a heads up. And while my clients were hedging and hinting about it, hindsight is 2020 and I didn't catch any of those hints until I was into brain fog, weight gain, and hot flashes. So I became a hormone specialist so that you don't have to be standing in the checkout line with three pregnancy tests at age 42 when your kids have just graduated high school. I don't want you to start another pre-vacation diet and gain five pounds. I don't want you to rush to the doctor with a long list of symptoms to be told, you're not old enough, your labs are normal, it's all in your head. Hmm. But what I do want for you is to know and be able to recognize the signs of hormonal disruption. I won't call it perimenopause, but that's what it is. I want you to know what the common triggers are to the common symptoms of those hormonal disruptions and I want you to feel amazing in the second half of your life. Speaking of life, what is life but a series of habits? Yeah, that's why we're here today, habits, remember? Some of these habits we have had since we were kids. Some are newer, some were put in place on purpose, and some are there by default. But the truth of the matter is, that 90% of your day is a habit. 90%, did you know that 90%? Think about that. Everything from what time do you get up? Those two cups of coffee with a little bit of cream. Where do you sit down to scroll and drink your coffee? What do you eat for breakfast? What path do you take to work? What do you eat for lunch? Do you bring your snacks or buy your snacks? How do you pack the dishwasher? How you initiate sex? Even sex can be a habit. That's just sad. But not all habits are bad. In fact, habits will help save you brain power for the big decisions and for willpower maintenance. But what about those bad habits? Today, we're gonna talk about becoming aware of your current habits, what the eight steps are to creating a habit that sticks, and how drastically your life can change based on your habits. So if you're ready, first things first, drop in the comments, what habit would you like to start? What habit would you like to start today? 
or this week or next year or New Year's or whatever. What habit is it? I've got examples throughout today, but if I've got real life examples, that's that can be more fun, right? So put them in the comments if you've got some. Um, so first up, what habits do you already have in place that might be preventing you from putting that habit that you want in place? Hey Debbie, nice to see you here. So today, my habit of choice, seeing no other options, seeing no other options. My habit of choice is I want to add drinking more water to my day. Regular exercise, okay, we'll add that one in too. I appreciate you filling that out earlier too. So we're gonna start by what are my current habits that might be getting in the way of drinking more water? Perhaps it's the two cup of coffees, two cups of coffee I like while I scroll in the morning. Um, I'm newer to working from home, so the triggers that I used to have about when to drink are gone. My fridge, thanks to my husband, is stocked with all of the sodas I love. It's cold outside, so I drink far less water just out of habit, and I drink wine after supper. Now, which of these habits am I willing to shift or give up in order to make room for more water? Which ones am I not willing to change? Let's go to the exercise example. Regular exercise. What might be getting in the way of regular exercise? I don't have a regular schedule. Maybe the gym is closed. I don't have equipment at home. I don't like to exercise when my husband is home. Um, what might be getting in the way of your regular exercise. Now there's no judgment here because these habits that we have, they are serving us in some way, right? You don't need a complete overhaul. In fact, that might actually stall your progress. But is there one thing you could switch out to focus on? Maybe I could substitute one of those coffees for tea or take out a soda. Let's see here. Ooh, it just so happened. Listen to this, Val. Another example. Going to bed. I want more sleep. So maybe you want more sleep. Let me see. I gotta see what the rest of your comments says here. Whew, 3 a.m. I see 3 a.m. too, but not because I'm getting up again. Okay. So maybe you've started getting up early to go to the gym. And that serves a purpose, right? You wanna get going to the gym. And maybe you stay up late watching TV. Maybe you stay up late to spend time without your kids or without your spouse. Or maybe you stay up late because your, your spouse, your partner, works second shift and you never get to see them so you wait up for them, right? Now, that serves a purpose, right? I stay up late to see my, my partner. So you decide you need more sleep. I get that, right? So what are some of the answers that that could be? A nap at lunchtime? a dedicated day with your partner or a dedicated day without your kids. Um, maybe Val, it's recording that TV show that ends up keeping you up too late. Just a thought. So maybe you could play around with the answer here, but maybe you FaceTime your partner or they FaceTime you when they're on their lunch break, which is your evening. And then you set a regular date with your partner so you can go to bed early every night during the week and then you feel better during the week. Think outside the box, lots of options. If you have any questions on that box, go ask a three-year-old or a 23-year-old. They're full of it. Just ask them. <laughs> okay, so we've examined our current habits. Let's talk about the eight steps to getting, them to, getting new ones to stick. So I'm gonna go back to the water one, but hey, we can talk more about exercise and sleep at the end again, okay? So first of all, step one, pick one specific small habit. Just one, not two, not three, not all of the habits, because when you start a new habit, this is going to take some brain power as we get started and as we start defining our triggers that are gonna help you remember to make this habit happen. So instead of being healthier, let's go with drinking more water or drinking 64 ounces of water every day. 
yeah, that number is arbitrary. It's just an easy number, right? Step two, pick an action habit instead of an outcome or a being habit, right? I want to be healthier. I want to be healthier versus let's drink water daily. Those are different, right? Because when you say, I want to be healthier, what does that even mean? Snacking when I read, oh, I hear you. Okay, we'll get it to it. But, okay, so be healthier. I, I don't know what that means, and thus I cannot act on that, right? But if I say, I want to drink more water, now I can make a plan. Now I can say, okay, the plan is, whatever, I'm gonna sub out one of those coffees for a water. I'm going to, hmm, but I can make a plan to drink more water. Be healthy is so big, and fluffy, and such a pretty goal. What do you do with that? Step three, you make the habit an addition, not a subtraction. So Brenda, if I were to say, well, don't snack when you read, right? Or no, you can't have a snack. What if instead we make it an addition? Have that snack before you read. Or instead of saying, limit my coffee, cut out one of my coffees, replace the coffee with water, I could say, drink more water. I'm going to drink more water. That is an addition. Hey, Megan, hi, Diane. Which one feels better? I've gotta cut out my coffee. I've gotta cut my snack out altogether. I can't watch my show. That doesn't feel good, right? But if instead we say, I'm gonna record my show and watch it later, I'm going to have my snack, I'm gonna put my snack in a bowl. Maybe, it, maybe it's a limiting thing, I'm not quite sure, right? What feels better? I can still have my snack, I can drink more water. Because the second I say, no more coffee, look at the pink elephant in the room, what do you, what do you think? You're thinking about the pink elephant, you're thinking about your cup of coffee, you can smell your coffee, right? Instead, I didn't say anything about the coffee. I said, I'm gonna drink more water. Now, by default, I might drink less coffee, but my brain is not distracted by what I'm doing without, by, by the lack of coffee in my life, right? You still get a snack, you still get to watch that show. Let's just watch it differently, right? All right, step number four, let's start with habits that get a result quick. So if kind of the end goal is to be healthier, what are some ways we can be healthier? Eat more protein, eat more vegetables, exercise, drink some water. What one thing is going to get us the quickest results? And pick that thing, right? Because there is no bigger incentive to act than actually getting results, right? So maybe I'm like, uh, Brenda, why do you want to snack when, okay, so you say a bad habit. Snacking when I read is a bad habit. Why do you want to quit that bad habit? All right, so we need some whys on that. Step number five out of eight, prepare. Nothing is gonna stall progress like a lack of preparation. So drink more water. What do I need to ensure to get more water? Well, for me, like when I drive, I need water in my car. So do I have a case of water either in my car or by the door? Or do I have my refillable water bottle out? Because is it on the counter? Because at five o'clock in the morning, when I am in my other set of habits, right? I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this. If water's not already in there, I'm not going to be looking for that water bottle. And if I'm not looking for that water bottle, I forget to bring the water bottle all together and then I can't drink any more water. Right? So get the water bottle out today, get it on the counter, maybe even put a note on the door to remind you that you're gonna drink more water. Okay, mindless eating while you read. Maybe there's a note on your book that says, put that snack in a bowl. Stop reading to have that snack, something like that. Maybe in the case of recording a TV show, maybe it's making sure you know how to record a TV show, because no lie, three remotes by our damn TV. I couldn't record a show. I can't even turn a TV off if Ken goes to bed, right? So do you know how? And do you know how to play it when you're ready, right? There's some preparation steps you can do. 
Okay, we got three more steps, but I want to make sure you know about the Black Friday specials that I got going on. Okay, so I'm going to really fast. Special one, Hormone Habits. It's a six habit program, six big dial movers to help you balance your hormones, to help you feel calm during the holiday chaos, head off holiday depression, increase your energy, and at least limit the holiday weight gain. I don't want to promise holiday weight loss, but hey, because my next promise is that you can do this in five minutes without giving up a single holiday treat or tradition. So if we can at least just stall weight gain, that's awesome, right? You can do all of the, the six habits while you travel, or you can skip a week because I built in a catch-up week. For Black Friday, the program is $197. That's a 50% off price. But if you get it before Friday, like today, or tomorrow, I'm going to give it to you for 75% off. That's $99 huge. These are six big wins, right? Program number two for the holidays is Jumpstart Your Perimetabolism. It's a four-week one-on-one coaching program to help you learn the rules of weight loss while your hormones are changing. Because I promise, it's not you. It's the plan for 20-somethings that doesn't work in your 40-something system. This program starts in January, sign up now, and only pay the deposit and the balance is due before we get started. Third program, join the Menopause Monthly Community where you get all your workouts, meal ideas, advanced trainings, live Q's and, Q's and A's, Q's and Q&A's with me because there's nothing like the support of a group. Join this week, pay for December, you get January for free and you get a jump on the January programming that's coming out. Lock in the $47 a month price, but you can cancel any time. And finally, the fourth program, the fourth deal is, it's the bigger program, it's the Use Your Cycle program. It's a one-on-one -on -one coaching program that shows you how to support your hormones even when you quit having your period. It helps you feel vibrant, sexy, energetic. It helps you lose weight easily and maintain it by using your hormone cycle. You put the deposit down this weekend, pick your start date, and then you get the hormone habits and the Jumpstart Your Perimetabolism programs for free. Okay, back to the last three steps. So far, we have one specific habit that is an action that's an addition with quick results. And we have prepared. Our water bottle is on the counter. Step six, tell your besties about your new habit. I know everybody's got different feelings on letting people know what they're doing, but if you tell your support crew, maybe they'll join you or maybe at the very least they won't unknowingly sabotage you. Like instead of they're at the coffee shop and they're like, oh my God, Denise would love this coffee. I'm going to grab her a cup of coffee and bring it back. If they know I'm trying to drink more water, maybe they buy me the fancy water instead. Right? Tell your besties. Number seven. Begin. It seems obvious, but so many of us get caught up in the waiting for all of the stars to align and the lights are all green and we need to know all the what ifs that we forget that action is powerful. Just start and trust when you get to that light five miles down the road that you can see right now is, is red, that in five miles it's going to be green or that by the time you get there, you'll know what to do. And step eight. This is the biggest, most important step. Start again. Rarely do you get to start a new habit just once and the stars are aligned and everything falls into place and you never fall off. All new habits require practice, whether it's getting to your friend's new home without serious guidance, that takes practice, or drinking more water, that takes practice. You have not failed if you've fallen off. In fact, starting over after a slip is an even bigger win. It's a bigger win because you're keeping your word to yourself that you're gonna drink more water, that you're not gonna mindlessly eat, that you're gonna go to bed at a reasonable time. What time is that? Three o'clock is not reasonable. Midnight? What time? I need a time there, Val. We need to be more specific. Okay, let's zoom back out. For the last several minutes, we've been talking about a glass of water. Let's zoom back out to the big picture. 
we've been talking about a glass of water when really what we want is to lose 20 pounds. Now, will switching to drinking more water help you lose 20 pounds this week? Probably not. And will focusing on one more water lead to choosing to eat more vegetables, going for a stroll on your lunch break, lifting weights two times a week, and reducing the number of weekly desserts? Maybe. Because with each of these wins, we are building mental stamina and pathways to winning. Once we know how it works, the brain will keep carving a path there. Each week that we string together of one more water, one more water, builds our beliefs that we can do healthy things that are hard. Each time we pre practice saying, but water first, we are gaining confidence that we can do hard things, that we can put ourselves first, that we are capable, and that even when we slip, we start again sooner than the last time, sooner than the last time. And so the veggies, those are just a little bit easier to add month two if you keep your word to yourself about the water. And the adding exercise, your brain now already, it's starting to carve this path. I know to drink more water. I know I can eat veggies. What if I apply that same map to exercising, right? I know the eight steps now. I, I got this, Ooh, the rut in your brain, you're forming a good rut, right? You just substitute a new thing each month, layer after layer after layer. And in 12 months, you're looking back and realizing that you are a water swilling, veggie eating, weightlifting runner who weighs 150 pounds. Or you're still looking for your damn water bottle. Which do you choose? One more thing. I asked in the group, and I got a few comments. What is the best day to start a habit? What is your best day to start a habit? I'd love to know, put it in the comments. What is your best day to start a habit? Is it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Your birthday, what's the best day to start a habit? For me, Denise, it's Thursday because 20 years ago, yes, I know when it was, 20 years ago, I started a meal plan and I succeeded. I had a win. And now I start everything big on Thursdays because it's a habit, because I win when I start a habit on a Thursday. But seriously, it's not New Year's Day, it's not the first of the month, and it's not Monday. Those days have too much pressure and too many losses for most people. I mean, how many Mondays have you started the thing and you failed by Wednesday? It's the same as why I do start on Thursdays. I have a habit of winning on Thursdays. I've got a, a, a map, a, a win record for Thursdays. More people have a loss record when they start on Mondays. It's not the day. It surely isn't New Year's, right? And the other popular answer in the group was to start today. I love that. As long as you don't take those unplanned for fails to heart because, and you use them for planning points for tomorrow, right? So let's say Val says, starting today, I am recording that show that I always fall asleep for and never see the end for, that, that show that maybe starts at 10 o'clock, whatever. I'm gonna start recording it. And it's 10.05 and you're like, oh no, I forgot I was gonna record this tonight. And I don't know where the remotes are and I don't know how to do it. My husband's not around, my kid's not around, right? So just, just take it to heart and go, okay, before tomorrow, I gotta remember to set an alarm for 9.58 and how to record this dang show, right? Good, so Mondays are a good day for you. Good, I like it. Now, if you've got some questions or some stuff we want to go over um, for sure, like if you have more specific on how to add more regular exercise, tell me more about that regular exercise. Or let's see here, packing my day full of things. Tell me more and let's talk about it more. But meanwhile, Black Friday is great, but today's deals are better right? Whether it's hormone habits for $97 before Friday, 
whether it's jumpstart your perimetabolism, where you just put a deposit down and pay the rest before we start in January, joining the monthly community, or getting set up for the Use Your Cycle program. As we're winding up, I wanna make sure to let you know, have a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope you enjoy it, whether you're virtual or with your family or enjoying it in new ways this year. Have a most fantastic week. And if there's anything I can help with, I'm around. Have a fantastic one, guys.